I see somebody in the audience over here wearing a shirt. Yes, hi, it says the morning shirt. Are you a big fan? All right, we've got groupies. You know, the last, uh, the last guy I had here ran down and take selfies. I'm not going to ask Charlotte to do that, but she has brought so much in this third season of the morning show. Uh, she has uh, worked on and, and uh, done so many well-known shows like Homeland, Fosse Verdon, House of Cards, and many others. This was her first season as showrunner and executive producer of the morning show, Charlotte Stout, right here. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Contenders. Grab the mic right there. And uh, right over there, she's going to wave at you. She's wearing the morning show um, merch. I love it. <laughs> Very nice. I love it. A uh, uh, lot of fans of the morning show here. As you know, I'm obsessed with this show. We've talked before, and uh, you know, I can't wait to see what happens when it comes back. But man, you know how to like keep us on the edge of our seats and wondering what's going to happen next. This is a, a show you walked into that had already had two seasons. Is that a difficult thing as a producer to come in, or is that a, a challenge you like? I think it's kind of a gift, because to create characters that people love that people will watch do kind of very flawed, messy, sometimes awful things. Yeah. Somebody already did that. So I just <laughs> got to come in and think about how to torture them a little more. <laughs> uh, so, and I think the other thing that really, that I love about this show is it really has the opportunity to, to speak to the moment, right? I mean, it is a show ultimately about truth and we're sort of in this crazy time where truth is so contested and elusive and sort of pulled in every direction. So I think the tension between the sort of gloss and glamour and sexiness of the show and sort of the anxiety underneath, it kind of gives the show its like special sauce, I think. And you're playing right off the headlines at any given time, which is always a, a dicey thing. I want to show them a clip, though, first, before we talk more about where you take this show and, and how you approached it. But let's take a look at the morning show. This is Emmy winner Billy Crudup right here. More stuff is going to come out about me. And it is going to make me look like a monster. Some of it will be true. Some of it won't be, doesn't matter. He's going to try to bury me. should have listened to you. Uh, maybe I deserve it. Maybe I lost myself in chasing all of this. Anyway, I just wanted you to hear it from me. Don't flinch. It's what you always taught me, right? You gotta face things head on. See them for what they are. The power behind there. Uh, good night. I love that last line. You know, you are listening to this whole thing and good night, mom. Yeah. I, I am obsessed with Corey and his mother. <laughs> I just <laughs> I I we sort of were like, what if he's what if he we saw you're always like, why are these people the way they are? Yeah. Right? How do they get sucked into this crazy world? And I it's not a show that likes backstory very much. Um, it, it's always moving forward and moving quickly, but I thought it'd be kind of interesting to see like how, what mom had done to the inside of his brain, you know. <laughs> this is such, uh, it's such an amazing ensemble cast that just keeps growing, and uh, you're dropping these major stars in. Like this season, John Hamm came in, and whoa, when I say heated up the action here, <laughs> I'm not kidding. Uh, wow, okay, so how was that? <laughs> Well, I think we had an initial meeting to talk about the characters, uh, Jen, John, myself, and a couple of other people. And I remember they were sitting on a sofa together, 
And it was the kind of the first, they had obviously met many times before, but that was the first time I was sort of looking at them like, oh, in a two shot, what's this gonna feel like? And I was like, wow, yes, like there's, the question will be what will keep them apart? Like we're gonna have to give them a lot of obstacles. <laughs> kind of went like that. Yes, yeah. uh, with Jennifer Aniston, uh, uh, amazing. And, you know, in working with Jen and uh, with Reese Witherspoon, who sort of, you know, are the powers behind the power here, this was their baby, to come to television weekly with this kind of a show, how are they to work with and how closely do you collaborate on the direction of the show with them? We work really, really closely. And when I say they really produce, they are full-on producers that can... You know, casting, uh, locations, you know, thoughts on locations, storylines, you know, sometimes dialogue tweaks because, you know, they are both mistresses of comedy and, you know, they know how to take out the one comma and the one the to make the line twice as funny. So <laughs> I'm like, get out of the way when they do that because they know best. So, but it's actually, it's really great. And some things that ended up on screen are really a direct, direct result of that collaboration. So. It's fun. It's a great group of people, honestly. It's really, yeah. Yeah, and I, like I, I mentioned when in the intro, you've really ratcheted this up. It's evident in all the nominations the show has been getting from all the major uh, award shows uh, this se for this season's show. Um, and I didn't think it got its due early on, and I, I was a viewer from day one. I just was hooked on this thing. And, um, and now I think everyone's caught up with it and you know and and are hanging on to it uh religiously as they say what what do you think it is that you know that it just keeps growing i think it was slightly ahead of its time right because the very very first iteration of the show wasn't i believe me too right and then the matt lauer thing happened right. and so Carell it kind of it. was it was right on the zeitgeist moment and i think it's kind of because it's a new show and because it is about such messy, messy people, um, and we're in a time where like everybody's, it doesn't matter what side of the, the line you're on, like everyone's behavior is scrutinized and uh, judged and you know, social media is sort of our new um, jury and everything that I think it's perfectly suited to sort of deal with like, where is the line? What is the right thing to do? And I like that they're like us, like we're always messing up. We want to do the right thing, but a lot of times we don't. And I think they're so lovable that you can let them fail and you can also relate to it. Yeah, and the power dynamic between men and women is yes. one of the things that I think is fascinating about this show and it keeps going uh, with different characters. But you're really seeing women in, in a, a position that we don't often see them in, in television shows like this. That's true and I think, um, not to spoil anything, but that question of like, who's going to run this place <laughs> in the end, you know, and the question of can the women do it better? It's like a real question. <laughs> well, let's see. Yeah. You know, definitely. That, that, that's what you think? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it, it may not be, you know, I think they, you can beat Fred Micklin. That's not too hard. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you um, do a great job. I wrote down some of the things that it dealt with. These are some of the themes that it dealt with this season. Me too. Roe versus Wade, January 6th, Elon Musk and space travel, racism, corporate intrigue, journalistic ethics. <laughs> oh my God, Th there's everything this, this show touches on. I'm wondering if that's dangerous too because by the time you finish filming it, the world seems to be moving so fast that it might be ahead of you. Do you worry about that and how do you keep that in your head as a writer. I absolutely, I mean, you're always, like I say, you're, you're worried that the, the zeitgeist bus is, is, you're gonna miss it, you know, you're gonna chase after it going, ah. <laughs> um, I think the funny thing is, it, in, this was back in fall 2021. Right. That's when I first came on. So I was really worried, like, is anyone gonna think about Jan 6th in a year? <laughs> I thought, oh, everyone's gonna move past it. People won't be, and so I was a little worried about that storyline and then, yeah, I was wrong. <laughs> Very wrong. And there so. you go, because you never know what's going to happen. Like, I remember Murphy Brown. You know, Murphy Brown was very much talking about Dan Quayle all the time and things like that. And now if you watch Murphy Brown, which was just a brilliant show of yeah. its time, Gosh. but now if you watch it, a lot of viewers are going, who's Dan Quayle? What? What's that about? And you know, the funny thing, like, for anyone who's old enough to remember who Dan Quayle is, like, we were just like, oh, he can't spell potato. Yeah. Uh, he ended up doing really, really well. <laughs> you know, he has an he had an investment firm. That guy's 
like in clover, trust me. <laughs> he survived. Exactly. I mentioned all those shows you've been involved in, Homeland, Fosse Verdon, which was just out of this world too, House of Cards, on, on and on in your career. Um, uh, how long do you like to stay with the series and that it's fresh for you as, as a showrunner to keep going? Um, so this was your first season. Are, uh, do you like it enough? Do you want to stay with it a few seasons? I think you, you, know, you really do become invested in the characters and they, they're real. Like even shows that I've previously worked on, I will wake up and think about them. Like what are they doing? I mean, I, I think that happens to a lot of actors and writers. You sort of, st they, they do become so real to you. I think as long as the world is, you know, a shit show, <laughs> uh, there, there will be a place for this, the morning show. Yeah. And uh, it, look, there's no sign that we've learned anything. Um, <laughs> that's, so I think we might be okay. <laughs> I, I Sadly. Think so. I think <laughs> but, yeah. so too. And this is Apple. At the Apple, this was their first, I think, really big, you know, budgeted, big star uh, series and I go like wow all these people how are they gonna even keep this going you know th these people don't do weekly you know drama series and that sort of thing what is it like to work with a streamer as opposed to a network where you have more rigorous restrictions in terms of commercials going in and that sort of thing do you like the freedom I, I love it and actually I'm really happy the show is a week-to-week -week show because the episodes are pretty dense, a lot of them, and I think you can, it's not really a binge show. I mean, I think you can, you can binge it after it's all out, and you can obviously, you know, watch it however you want, but I find like it's a pretty, you try to serve everybody a real meal every episode, so you want to take a second and go, okay. But I understand people need to like see what happened with John and Jen. <laughs> it's hard to, <laughs> it's hard to put that off. Well, that's it. My wife loves to binge, and I do not. And so I say, no, right. we're going to wait. We're going to watch it when everybody else watches it. Because I think part of the fun of it is talking about it after. Did you see what happened on Morning Show last night or yesterday? And um, I, I think that's cool. You know, and then you wait. There's a, something about the collectiveness of watching something like this that I think is important. I agree. And again, I'm from the era where you had to wait every week for The Sopranos. You know, <laughs> and then like everybody saw that finale at the same time. That's right. And everybody went to their TV and went, wait, wait, what, what, you know, at the very last beat and stuff. So that is, that is fun to be in the yeah. kind of a larger conversation. So now you're going to tell us all about what season four holds in store. I can tell you a couple of things. Um, oh, good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, there's a, there is a time jump because there's always a time jump because it takes, it takes a long, and we're also, yes, we're trying to stay as close to the moment as we can. And, you know, <clears throat> we blew everything up last, last year, just, we, just with the biggest bomb we could possibly build. So <laughs> now I'm like, why did I do that to myself? But, um, so we have to, like, how is the band going to get back together yeah. and, and what will that look like? So that's one question. And then just in the world of, you know, the world of deep fakes and AI and the misinformation that, you know, it's the fog of war that we're kind of seeing now in the Middle East and stuff. Um, it, we're kind of looking at who can you trust? That's one of the themes. And can you trust your own eyes? Can you trust what you're seeing? Can you trust yourself? Can you trust your news outlet? Truth is very important. I think that's an excellent theme to deal with because misinformation and everything is top of mind right now. Yeah, and I see that um, the networks are hiring like misinformation czars. You know, they're now hiring, creating positions just to deal with kind of the issue of not being believed and also trying to figure out what's actually real. So it's kind of fascinating. Are you dealing in, in researching and keeping this uh, also real and believable as a morning show? Do you actually deal with the real world out there of morning shows still? I know what Jen Aniston, you know, took a tour of Good Morning America for a couple of days before she took on this role. But uh, do you have um, a, an insight into what really goes on on all these kinds of shows to make it a little more realistic? I do have some people I talk to and text with. And what's really interesting about this show is real life journalists, often some of some note, will just text me out of the blue. <laughs> and um, sometimes they'll say, I can't say this but I wish your show would say this because I'm dying to, I have to maintain a certain, you know, 
position on as a tr as a trusted news source and it's not that like they want to tell you something that's false they're just like i'm carrying this thing and i can't talk about it because i'm supposed to be mr or mrs objective right. and it's really extraordinary to get those messages cuz you <laughs> like that's the front line and that's what people are struggling with we also talk to lots of experts and you know they're kind of on the the f they're ahead of us right the experts will tell you like 6 months from now a year from now this is the stuff, so we try to dig into that, yeah. It's amazing. Oh, I cannot wait, when is season four? I don't know the exact date, but it's, it's going to be, as far as I know, it's gonna be after the election for sure. So, oh. I mean, who knows if we'll know who the president is, but oh it will be after people vote. Wow. Yes. Well, more power to you. Thank you so much for coming out on Contenders Thank you today. so much, thank Charlotte you. Stout. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Oh, really?